Attention gamers! Recently on my relapse back to playing this piss pit of a game I played the queen of skin sales but with tank runes and a series of items that still had me lighting people up but it also made me beefier than a bison burger to the point where no one could kill me and even though there was a lot of theory crafting by a few lux lunatics, the real reason this is so overpowered is the combination of conqueror rune with riot's newest mistake which is named after my experience with their game. It's basically like a healing AP Sunfire cake that makes sweet sweet love with the Conqueror rune which leads me to think that on champs like Lilia or Swain this is going to be free low and today's video is going to prove that. Now if I could describe the dream game when trying to prove that an item is OP it would start with some crossbowing hunchback being more overextended than the song Free Bird which is ironic because she has to flash for her and her bird to stay free but then when I do have a run in with their sobbing jungler my mid laner actually rotates and we get a kill. In this ideal situation we keep catching that midget mummy with his dick out and since I have the team that rotates we get an early lead. This then builds up my confidence to start doing things that are quite invasive and the content gets even better when I get a kill but my teammate dies which starts to position the game in a way where I get to be the hero on TV. Their mid laner is playing something troll like Santa's scrotum which makes ganks to this lane more free than a hug from a hooker and while I'm busy farming myself, my teammates are dying while defending objectives just so I can come in and clean the shit up making it look like I'm hard carrying the game but not so much that it's boring. For example there are some close calls to build the suspense but in this situation I'm the main character so I still come out on top until it's time for me to build the item that this whole video is about and hard carry the rest of the game only for these weak mental babies to ruin the dream game before I can even use it for a video. But this is league so instead I get the jinx who runs straight bot instead of leashing only to learn that she is actually our mid laner who oh did I mention also didn't buy items at the start of the game so everyone acts surprised when you hear this. Which can better be explained by her proclaiming this is her first game in 2 years so I know I gotta get risky to carry this bisky in a clutch cleanup where I definitely didn't die right after only for her to come out of the gate strong in this one and I'm thinking if you wanna get fed like this, you can't have this. And if you wanna get fed like this, you get this. Now that I've wooed you with the sickest food transition of all time hear me out. I once heard that humans will die if they stop eating so I promise what I'm about to say is relevant. Factor is a pre-made food delivery service that is cheaper better tasting and more reliably consistent than enslaving Gordon Ramsay himself in your basement and making him work for you. Restaurants make me go broke fast food makes me go to the bathroom and cooking myself makes no sense because that requires effort which is why I rely on Factor for at least 60% of what I eat in my life. It's super easy you go to their site and select if you want the chef to surprise you or if you are trying to trim down on the fatness or maybe you have some limitations or just want to grow some damn biceps with more protein. You check out the meals they have and place your order. Bam pre-packed good nest ready to be popped into the microwave or oven is delivered to your door and if you use my link below or scan this QR and use code pograbjan 50 you can get your order half off today and let's get into the games. And by games I mean trying to carry this paraplegic sloth jinx mid so that I can make a video as I immediately revisited top because this particular satan spawn can't ward and I know if I get enough ticks on him he'll die to rabies and I'll get paid. Eventually I have to face the music of seeing this Jinx's behavior in person and all I want to do is run away and pretend I live in a world where that doesn't exist but the fight continues so I come back in just for 8 I'd Obi-1 Kenobi to do some meditation while I'm trying to fight which results in some awkward games of touch the butt and run until we go all in and I take home the pot. My top laner is still getting pissed on worse than a dive bar urinal but luckily this semen demon still doesn't believe in warding so when he sees me for a third time he knows he's capital F fuck so I do all the work and then Gwen takes all the credit. Word on the street is there's a low health distinguished gentleman Cho Gath in the area so I say you make me jump I'll make you sleep and then I springbok my way into those shrubs to cause more shutdowns than the US government during budgeting season. Speaking of the government Obama's wife was getting Kenobi'd hard in this one probably because Jinx gave him all her lunch money for a week straight and when the bad guys see me they know I'm now too tanky to fight so they choose flight which is one way to make this colorful caribou flaccid but at least Katara is down to keep playing so it wasn't a total waste. But with just an Aegis rod and this new bullshit item I'm tanky enough to limit test my strength against the shitters who have been spoon fed by miss I haven't touched a computer in 2 years bitch and I'm already tanky enough to hang with the big boys. 
add a rift maker to the equation and at this point I was just on search and destroy missions knowing if any water bender had a run in with me she'd call her whole family to participate in the pissing match then I'd be able to tranquilize at least one of them and come in swinging my knapsack like the Scottish killer I am, until it's just meditating Marshall who is more outnumbered than Skybree on a casting couch and this Cho'Gath who looks like a failing magician's coat closet becomes the last to fall before the ace. All my damage scales in combat and ticks harder for each second I'm around so even though I'm not a glass cannon caribou in this one I can still tickle the tanks enough to have them running back to base. It was now time to start rizzing up the enemy nexus and all these as bends and their fed early games were just looking at me wanting absolutely nothing to do with my EU accent as I didn't even have to play the game correctly anymore to nuke kids while staying as fit as a fiddle and even though Jinx hasn't seen color on her screen for like 20 minutes straight now I was able to just whip narcotics laced glitter sprinkles in the middle of four of these shit stains without a worry in the world and so me building unending despair caused them to experience it until we wore them down and I defied the odds to prove that it's good. Now the ideal way to prove this item is also stupid on Swain would start with an uncoordinated slap fest between four morons when we are all still toddlers. My support would get down to a pint sized amount of health which would bait the TikTok brain in this albino to path worse than a drunk GPS system which would give me enough time to construct a large red hand to grab her by the pussy as some former presidents would put it and secure an early kill. Then while I don't exactly know what my support does because I've been playing classic WoW instead of League and enjoying my life lately I do learn that holding the blonde hostage has some synergy with one of his like 600 abilities. In this case we start chatting if we want to split an uber back to base when that coked up gun slut comes in asking if we can give her a full tour of all our abilities so that she can understand what each one does and the impact it has on her health bar so we oblige. At this point I just had a wad of cash burning a hole in my pocket and the cute blonde sees that and thinks she can snuggle up to my rich geriatric ass, touch my wiener a few times before I pass away and earn my fat inheritance but I inform her that this gold digging plan of hers has one problem and it's that I plan on outliving her by a wide margin. We start zoning these shitters better than a traffic cone as Aphelios' brother gets the one so low you're probably thinking well in the perfect content game you'd kill her instead of her getting away with 4 health and that's where I ask if this is what you were talking about. Their support will start spending her time clearing vision as if getting ganked is the biggest threat right now as I use my blood ball to hurt her back towards me and we fire a bunch of shit at her to continue this stomp fest. We continue fighting and my support will start getting hit by abilities to bait them in, never me because this is the ideal video and I have to show that I don't make mistakes but rather I'm just the one with the epic game sense to punish these unfed silver players that I'm smurfing on without admitting that this is actually the same elo that I've been stuck in myself for 11 years until we take them both down again. Eventually they will convince backup to come in and help under the condition that the lights have to be off during his grand entrance like he is some dramatic sweet 16 spoiled brat only for him to learn the hard way that this geriatric raven breeder doesn't fuck around so he gets to make an exit that everyone will also see and then we continue to bully even harder until I'm so fed that I could probably just buy 6 ruby crystals and clickbait a video on that being strong at this point but things were going too well before I got my item and this game could only end one way. In reality I end up supporting for this. I start the game out landing every hook but I was starting to build evidence that this was not a human controlling my ADC. Eventually by some grace of god this embarrassment to mankind gets first blood but I still have my concerns. Her build is looking promising so far against an almost full AD team and while I'm applying pressure her behavior is continuing to confuse me. I'm still trying my amputated dick off to make things happen in lane while she is clearly still learning what the keys on her keyboard do. Watching her in each of these plays is starting to feel like you plugged a GameCube controller into a PC gave it to a toddler and just hung out and watched what would happen. It didn't help that their jungler could smell the ineptitude from a mile away and pretty much perma hung out in our lane knowing Caitlyn would RP walk right into him as I was sweating my ass off just to keep this game from getting out of control. She would randomly just toggle auto attack on and seemingly leave her computer leaving me in situations that I was unsure of what to do until I would just say fuck it toggle on the soul sucker 9000 and try to stay in range of this sex whip whacking waterbender long enough to make the rest of the players in the game think that we don't have a literal bot on our team. 
I figured if we roamed a bit perhaps I could make things happen around the map away from this Caitlyn and that strategy did start to work until this steel ninja got away with like 6 health and I'm thinking if I get eyes on him she could use her ult, which she did, on the fucking full health ADC and lane who then killed her because she couldn't wait for 3 more seconds before I could gank and bail her out. I was more triggered than a wolf mob around someone who says the word men so I ignored warnings to back off knowing that I could suckle on this goth's teat until he pissed off. But this unknown entity playing Caitlyn was continuing to concern me. Luckily their team was trying their best to stay competitive in the utter stupidity contest which resulted in Shen dying a few times and me starting to get fed off of double kills but the second I died and had to watch this Caitlyn do her thing, I knew it was over and I think this particular player or riot planted bot may have just earned a spotlight or a full video dedicated to her. What do you guys think? Rav out!